Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm continuing my discussions on the changing albedo of the of the Earth, specifically the Arctic, because the Arctic is getting to be a much darker place. The albedo or average reflectivity of the entire Arctic region used to be 52% in 1979, and that dropped to 48% reflectivity in 2011 which means that the Arctic is much darker. It's, it's absorbing a lot more solar energy than it used to be, and therefore it's warm. That's, one of, that's the main reason why it's warming like, uh, like crazy. So I'm going to continue off where I, where I uh, left off in the last video. And uh, I've shown these um, maps here of the changing albedo in the Arctic versus the Antarctic, and this is, this is a change from March 1st, 2000 to December 31st, 2011. So the Arctic is getting a lot darker. Um, the reflectivity is dropping, and Antarctica is kind of mixed, um, getting darker around where there's a lot of melt on the surface, and getting um, more reflective in other regions. I'd like to see updated data, but I wasn't able to find it, um, find any. Okay, so again, here's the Arctic, which is getting darker, absorbing a lot more solar radiation. Now, if the ice was covered, if the Earth was covered in ice, the albedo would be 84%. So 84% of the sunlight that hit it would be reflected. If it was all dark green forest canopy, the albedo would be about 14%. Most of the sunlight would get absorbed. Whenever there's changes in ice cover, cloudiness, airborne pollution, or land cover, for example, from forests that are darker to farmland, imagine planting canola, for example, much higher reflectivity, these all have subtle effects on global albedo. Using satellite measurements accumulated since the late 1970s, scientists estimate the Earth's average albedo is about 0 0.30. So 30% of the light is reflected. So if you're up in space a long way from Earth, sun's hitting the Earth, about 30% of that sunlight hitting the Earth is reflected back to you, which you'd see in your spacecraft. Um, it, taken across the planet, overall, there's no significant global trend. There is definitely one in the Arctic, as I pointed out. But this is the albedo anomaly. So it's averaged over the whole Earth, and it's from 2000 to 2011, that satellite record, okay, up here, but it's the average. And what you can see is if this is the, the, the norm zero, you know, there's, it's, it goes, this, it's 0.4% higher, 0.4% lower, you know, there's fluctuation. Some years the Earth is reflecting more sunlight, other years less, okay, but there's no general trend overall you know, there's a lot of variation from year to year, okay? But, you know, as I've said, at the North Pole, reflectivity has decreased markedly, a result of declining sea ice, increasing dust and soot being deposited on the ice, additional melt ponds, things like that. You know, around the South Pole, reflectivity is down around West Antarctica and up slightly in parts of East Antarctica, but there's no net gain or loss. Okay, but at this, this was when Antarctic sea ice was increasing slightly each year. In fact, it increased about 1.5% per decade on average. But of course, um, you know, after setting record extent numbers um, in about 2014, the, the last number of years it's been plummeting, dropping off a cliff, setting record lows. Um, on the global map, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Pattern in the Pacific Ocean. Um, basically, there was weak El Ninos um, during the first seven years of the data record, and then that gave way to moderate to strong La Ninas. La Ninas bring convection and cloudiness over the Western Pacific Ocean. El Nino brings those rain clouds to the Central Pacific. Okay, so that shows, that explains the reflectivity. There was reduced reflectivity in the Central Pacific, and there was an increase in reflectivity in the Western Tropical Pacific. Okay, so that was consistent with the shift. So, so basically, the, you know, 
even on at global scales, Earth's albedo fluctuates markedly over short time periods due to natural variations in the climate system. Okay, and again, that's this graph here, and you can see the trends overall on the Earth from here, and the trends in the Arctic and Antarctic here. Okay, so this is very key um, information. Now, there's another NASA. Um, yeah. Okay. So, basically. Um, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we've we've seen that. Um, now, if I go, if you go to Google Images and just Google albedo of different surfaces, and you get something like this. So what you can see is you can see the albedo or reflectivity, you know, of trees, asphalt, concrete, grass all kinds of different things here. Um, you know, in cities, cities are basically darker, so that contributes to the urban heat island effect. Um, you know, this is another image here. You know, sea ice, average percentages, old snow, fresh snow reflects a lot more. Old snow, um, you know, you get melting and freezing, melting and freezing. It, it's reflecting only 59% of the incoming light. Sand and deserts reflecting, you know, a fair amount compared to other land surfaces and so on. Okay, and, uh, you know, different types of clouds, um, you know, cumulus clouds, 90% light reflected. Um, you know, there's different types, thick clouds, right? Different, there's different ratios for all types of different clouds and things. Albedo of various surfaces, right? So there's quite a range in a lot of different things, but you can get the idea. You know, if you look at a surface and it's dark, it's absorbing most of the solar radiation. If you look at a surface and it's light, it's reflecting a lot more to your eyes. Um, when you're over water, it very much depends on the angle of incidence. Okay, as you get to, as the sun starts to set and the angles are more glancing, you know, much more shallow angles um, from sunlight, then the reflectivity of the water gets very, very large. Um, okay, so there's all kinds of information that you can get there on, on uh, albedo. Now, this is a key finding recently, um, which, uh, you know, Wadhams and myself and others have talked about for you know, at least four or five years, but this was a, a recent study that just came out July 22nd, 2019. Research highlight, loss of Arctic's reflective sea ice will advance global warming by 25 years. Okay, this is Arctic winter sea ice extent. This is the multi-year ice. This is the ice that's just formed in the previous uh, winter. This is in 1980, and this is uh, in 2012. And look at the loss of multi-year ice, and now in 2019, there's less than 1% of the basin is multi-year ice. The so multi-year ice is almost all gone. Losing the remaining Arctic sea ice and its ability to reflect incoming solar energy back to space would be equivalent to adding 1 trillion tons of CO2 to the atmosphere on top of the 2.4 trillion tons emitted since the Industrial Age. So just to, since the start of the Industrial Revolution, we've, we've put out we've emitted 2.4 trillion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. So losing the sea ice is equivalent to adding another 1 trillion tons. It's enormous. Okay, now we're putting out about 40 gigatons, 40 billion tons of CO2 per year. So in 25 years, you put out a trillion tons. So at current rates, Losing the Arctic sea ice roughly equates to 25 years of global CO2 emissions. So it's going to speed up the arrival of a global threshold of warming of 2 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, we, we run the risk of catastrophic damage, ranging from more intense heat waves, coastal flooding, to extinction of terrestrial species and threats to food supply if that threshold is passed, this says. But I mean, we're seeing all of these things already, right? We're running all of these risks right now today. So these results were published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, Radiative Heating of an Ice-Free Arctic. And basically the conclusion of the study is that the sea ice will add a globally average 0.7 watts per square meter of solar heating to the Earth's system. We've already put in 0.21 watts per square meter, has already occurred between 1979 and 2016 from the loss of the sea ice. So 
we've got a lot more to go, right? We put in 0.21, we've got 0.49 left to go. When we lose sea ice completely, we'll have this additional warming factor. And this is average over the globe, the amount, you know, but it's specifically over the Arctic. So it really throws off the heat balance on the whole planet, messes up the jet streams, messes up everything. Another way to put it is the amount of additional heat introduced into the Earth's system because of Arctic melt is equivalent to an increase in CO2 concentration from 400 to 456.7 parts per million. So no sea ice, it's like adding suddenly 56, 57 parts per million of CO2. And, you know, if you divide that by 25, that's just over two, which makes sense, which is, you know, we're, some years are as high as three parts per million um, addition to CO2 concentrations. So losing the reflective power of Arctic sea ice will lead to warming equivalent to one trillion tons of CO2 and advance the two degrees threshold by 25 years. Any rational policy would make preventing this a top climate priority for world leaders. Okay, um, you know, worse, you know, it says, well, the paper presents a worst case scenario. Well, worst case scenario, what's that, losing the Arctic sea ice? You know, uh, you know, the odds are getting higher and higher and higher of losing it. And it's very likely that we'll lose it um, by 2022 or, or earlier. Okay, and computer forecast models always are underestimating the loss of Arctic sea ice. They analyze 40 climate models from modeling centers around the world. Not one, not a single one of the models simulated as much Arctic sea ice retreat per degree of global warming as has been observed during recent decades. Okay, an earlier study by the same team calculated the, the ice lost in the Arctic between 79 and 2011, added 6.4 watts per square meter of heating to the Arctic. And when you average it globally, that's about as much as 25% of the effect of CO2 during the same time period. Um, additional research shows that the thicker multi-year ice which survives year to year is down to 1% of the existing ice. There's a lot of uncertainty about the timing of when the Arctic could be seasonally ice-free. Some research suggests as early as the 2020s, others suggest 2030 and, and substantially later. Okay, so, you know, but the trend is, is uh, you know, they say the trend is your friend. In this case, the trend is, is your enemy. Um, now, for the baseline calculations, um, they, the authors assume that cloud cover would remain constant. However, they calculated that if the loss of the Arctic ice is accompanied by complete loss of cloud cover, the total warming would be three times greater. Conversely, if the Arctic experienced complete cloud cover, okay, the total warming would be half as much. Okay, so clouds are a huge factor. Now I'll talk about another study that showed that it wasn't, there wouldn't be a loss of cloud cover, there wouldn't be complete cloud cover, there'd be about 81% cloud cover. And that will mitigate some of the um, albedo effect of the, of the ice itself, because it's the albedo of the ice plus the albedo of the atmosphere that's important. Okay, um, now also, you know, as September becomes ice free, we'll see less ice in other parts of the year as well. Okay, but in parts, so for example, in June, we'll see a lot more, a lot less ice, and of course, the sun's a lot stronger than in September. So, you know, the timing of when there's no ice is also very important because of the uh, change of solar radiation, radiance in, in the Arctic, um, which is changing seasonally. Okay, so I had a look for this paper. I looked for this paper, I Googled it, I, tried all, I went to Google Scholar, I tried all different Google searches. I could not find the actual paper. So if somebody has a copy or could get me a copy, I'd love to see that paper that was published June 20th. It was called Radiative Heating of an Ice-Free Arctic Ocean. You know, you can Google that, you can find uh, Pistone is one author, Eisenman, Ram Ram and Nathan, okay, if I, I need to get a hold of that paper and I wasn't able to find it. So whether it was posted and pulled or what, I'm not sure. Um, but of course, when you start doing Googling for searches and you get all kinds of other things. So, 
you know, I Googled radiative heating of an ice-free Arctic Ocean, the title, Pistone, June 20th. These are the articles I came up. I selected since 2019. I'll tell you about some of these papers that I did find. Thanks again for listening.